And after my ride, I am gonna meet a computer scientist and the founder of Adastec, Dr. Ali. Hi, Jürgen. Thanks for yeah, this pleasure. It was a great experience, I'd say. So you're an US-based company. Yes. And you're doing the research and development department in Turkey. Turkey has a very good engineering uh, universities like this uh, Istanbul Technical University. It's very difficult to be an engineer in Turkey. Uh, there's like 3.5 million people entering the university exam. Generally, most of the universities takes only the first percent. The second thing is Turkey is the bus production hub of Europe. There are a lot of OEMs producing their buses over here. Since our solution is factory fitted, we should uh, partner with a bus company. That's why uh, we choose Turkey. The third thing is Turkey has techno parks. In techno parks, you can get a lot of tax advantages and also a lot of government grants, which is very impo important at the startup of your company. It looks to me that Turkey is a hotspot for buses and even autonomous driving. We live in Istanbul. It's one of the hugest, huge city. And then till last maybe 20 years, there was no subway and all the transportation with buses. We have the longest uh, segregated lane in the world crossing from one continent to other continent, but it carries a lot of people. Without public transit, you cannot solve the traffic problem. If you have electric cars, if you have diesel cars, if you have luxury cars, simple cars, Ubers, Lyfts, robot taxis, those do not solve the traffic problem. Traffic problem is only solved by public transit. There's a saying, uh, development is the country where rich people using public transport, not poor people having cars. What are the main challenges to implement then autonomous buses into the public transport? In some senses, the automating a bus is easier since you know the route well beforehand. So you know the empty version of the world, which makes the perception task a little bit easier. But then this vehicle should work 24 seven. You cannot say that, oh, it's raining. We are not working. Oh, it's uh, snowing. Uh, oh, we are in Michigan. There is like two meters of snow. Okay, no bus today. <laughs> So you should be available all the time compared to cars and driver does much more than a passenger car driver. They open the door, they look out the passengers, then they stop in the bus stops, they uh, op uh, deploy the ramp. Maybe if there's a disabled person, they help them to get locked, kneel the bus. You know, there's a lot of things and then you need to automate all of these not just driving task in the case of the automated bus. When will these buses be available in the public transport? It's already uh, in the public transit. Currently we are operating in Norway in public traffic, here in Istanbul in public traffic, uh, but with the safety driver. When the legislations uh, come uh, mature enough and also there will be good insurance policies, uh, we will be able to remove the driver completely. You're a computer scientist, so <laughs> what's the reason to found an autonomous bus company? I always loved deep science and difficult problems. Making a bus autonomous requires maybe around 11 different subjects in computer science, and it's a very multidisciplinary engineering problem. It's not just computer science, you need to work with control engineers, you need to work mechanical engineers, automotive engineers. What I believe is that when something is multidisciplinary, if you are able to do all of them in a good fashion, then you can create something great. It may be very difficult to be the best programmer in the world, but if you are best of breed from mechanical approach, control, software, then you can create something first in the world, like this bus.